to the brief of quiz, uh, which was related to the most topic. I'll go through these questions. Question one, any doubt on the first page? Any question or doubt? The first one. Okay, question one, there's a doubt. So the question is, which solution contain the chloride ions with a concentration of 0 0.05? Yeah, question one, I will solve. How we can work out the... Because the question is, which solution contain the concentration of a chloride ion as 0 0.05? First, we have the mass of a solute and we have the volume of a solution. So we'll first work out the concentration of this calcium chloride. What is the concentration of calcium chloride? Concentration is moles divided by volume. Like the moles of a solute divided by volume of the solution, that will give us the concentration. And But in this case, we have the mass of a solution. So how to convert the mass into moles? We have the formula that moles equal mass in gram divided by the molar mass. So mass in gram is 1.39. What about the molar mass of a calcium chloride? So for that, you should write a formula. The calcium chloride as calcium belongs to group two, valency is plus two and chlorine is group seven. So the formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. So what is the molar mass of the calcium chloride? In this case, calcium is 40.1 plus two chlorine are there, so 35.5 times 2. So 1.39, the 1.39 which is a mass in gram divided by the molar mass which is 40 plus 35.2 times 2. That is 110.1 so 1.39 divided by 110.1, that will give us the moles. So moles of the calcium chloride, the first example, 0 0.0125. Because it's 1.39 divided by 110. So 0 0.012. These are the moles. Or 125, 125 or 126. Now we need the concentration of the solution. So what is the concentration of the solution? 0 0.0125, that's a moles, divided by volume of the solution. It is in cm cube. We have to convert into decimeter cube. So we divide by 1000. So that will be equal to 0 0.25. So this divided by 0 0.25. How, what is the concentration of the solution? So the concentration of the solution is 0. 0, 0, double 2. So it was 0 0.0125 divided by 0 0.25. Sorry, it was 0 0.05. Uh, so it is 0 0.05. That we got the concentration. Yeah, it's 0 0.05. Now, the question is, we need the concentration of a chloride to be 0 0.05. But when calcium chloride, the CaCl2 will dissociate, it will produce one mole of a calcium ion and it will produce two moles of the chloride ion. So ratio between the calcium chloride and the chloride ion is 1 is to 2. So if we have the concentration of calcium chloride as 0 0.05, how many moles of chloride ion will be there? X, when we cross multiply, what will be the answer? The answer will be 0 0.1. So in the first solution, in the first solution, we will not have 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cube. We'll have 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. That's why it cannot be A. When we check option B, we have to do the same things like moles equal mass in gram over molar mass. Again, uh, we don't have to repeat that procedure because we already worked out that when 1.39 was divided by the molar mass, we got the same number of the moles, which was 0 0.0125. And now the volume of the solution is 500. 
So the concentration is moles divided by volume. So 0 0.0125. And this time the volume is 0 0.5. So 0 0.0125 divided by 0.5. So we got 0 0.025. These are the moles of calcium chloride. But in the question, we need the moles of only chloride ion. So this calcium chloride, CaCl2, will dissociate into one calcium ion and the two chloride ions. So the concentration of the calcium chloride was 0 0.025 because the ratio is 1 is to 2. So if the concentration of the calcium chloride was 0 0.025, what will the concentration of the chloride ion? It will be X or double. So what is the double of this? So this will be 0 0.05. And that is the question that which solution contains 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cube of the chloride ion. So B will be the right answer. Is it uh, clear, this one? How to know the dissociation of the calcium chloride or any compound, you have to write a formula, like calcium chloride is there. So when you write a formula for calcium chloride, it is CaCl2. So it means that when this compound will dissociate, it will give one calcium ion and it will give two chloride ions. Like what about if sodium chloride, what will the dissociation of sodium chloride? Sodium chloride formula is NaCl. So it means it will dissociate into one sodium ion and one chloride ion. If it was like calcium hydroxide, and the dissociation was there. So the dissociation, one calcium ion and two hydroxide ions. So to know the dissociation, it is important to write a correct formula. Without a formula, you cannot identify the dissociation of a compound. Next is uh, page two, question three, two and three, any doubt? Any doubt? Question two and three. Page three, question four. Any doubt? Page three, question four. No doubt. Page four, question five and six. Any doubt? Page four, question five. No doubt in this. Page five, question seven and eight. Page number five, question seven and eight. No doubt. Page six, question nine and ten. Page six, question nine, question ten. Page seven, question eleven, twelve. Any doubt in this? Page number 8, 13, 14. Question 13, 14, any doubt? No doubt. Page 9, question 15 and 16. Okay, 15 and 16. In this question, 4.08 grams of a hydrated copper sulfate was dissolved in deionized water to form a solution of 250 cm cube. What is the concentration of a copper to sulfate solution in moles per dm cube? So we need the moles of the copper to sulfate first. We have hydrated copper sulfate is there and the mass of the hydrated copper sulfate is 4.08.
to know the concentration, the formula is concentration is moles divided by volume. So first we'll work out the moles of the hydrated copper sulfate. How to work out the moles of hydrated copper sulfate? Moles equal mass in gram, which is 4.08 divided by molar mass. To work out the molar mass, you have to use a periodic table like copper is 64 plus sulfur is 32 plus oxygen is 16 times 4. And because it is a hydrated, it's a hydrated compound, so five water molecules are there as well. So plus five times the mass of the each water molecule is 18, so five times 18 because H2, H2O, uh, this is two multiplied by one and oxygen is 16. So total mass is 18. And there are five moles of water molecule, that's why we multiplied by five. So what's the answer for the moles? When 4.08 divided by the molar mass, which is 64 plus 32, plus 16 times 4, and then plus 5 times 18. What's the final answer for the mole? Zero point zero one six. So we got 0 0.016 moles of hydrated copper sulfate. And remember, hydrated salt and anhydrous salt, they always have the same moles. Why? Because like if we have copper sulfate, dot 5H2O, when it will dissociate or break down, it will break down into copper sulfate and then five water molecule. So the moles of the hydrated salt is always same as the moles of anhydrous salt. So we, we got 0 0.016 moles of the copper sulfate, hydrated or anhydrous, they will have the same moles. So 0 0.016. What is the meaning of term deionized water? Distilled water is also called a deionized water means it does not contain the ions because water can dissociate, break down into H plus and OH minus ions, which, but in this case, it's a deionized water. So it does not contain the H plus and OH minus ion. It's the distilled water simply. And we have the volume 250. So we divided by 0.25. So 0 0.016 divided by 0.25. What's the answer? 0 0.016 divided by 0.25. So 0. 0. 0.065 or 0 0.064. So C will be the right answer. Because it is 0 0.016 divided by 0.25. So when you divide them, you got 0 0.065. So that matches with option C. It does not make difference the deionized water. It's, it's a term which is used whenever we are making a solution because the distilled water or deionized water is used so that the concentration of the ions does not change. That's the only reason. In question 16, the mass, a mass of 2.5 grams of a sodium chloride react with an excess of a lead to nitrate, forming a solution of a lead to chloride with a yield of 95%. What mass of a lead to chloride we form? So here, what is the formula? The percentage yield is a practical value divided by theoretical value into 100. So we need practically, if it is a 95%, what mass of a lead to chloride will be formed? So first we'll work out the moles of the sodium chloride. How many moles of sodium chloride are there? Moles of a sodium chloride, NaCl, mass in gram divided by molar mass. Mass in gram is 2.5 and the molar mass of a sodium chloride is also given it's 58.5. When you substitute the molar mass, you don't bother about the equation. So this will be 58.5. So 2.5 divided by 58.5. So 0.4. 0.427 moles we get. Now, what is the ratio between? Because the, we want to find the actual moles of a lead to chloride. So, what is the ratio between the sodium chloride and the lead to chloride? According to equation, the ratio is 2 is to 1. So, if you have 0 0.427 moles, 
how many moles of a leg to chloride should be there x so we cross multiply so 0 0.427 divided by 2 this extra 0 0.04 can you check this 2.5 divided by 58 because one of the student is saying 0 0.042 so it is 2.5 divided by 58.5 it is 0 0.04 here yeah. I'm not checking the calculation. I'm just explaining the idea how it can be done. So 0 0.0427 is there. So this will be 0 0.0427. So 0 0.0427 divided by 2. So value of the x, it will be 0 0.021. So 0 0.0214 moles we'll get. Now these are the moles of the lead to chloride which will fall from this amount. What mass of the lead to chloride will be there? So how to work out the mass? We have the formula moles equal mass in gram divided by the molar mass. The moles are 0 0.0214. The mass in gram we don't know. And the molar mass of a lead to chloride is given 278.2. So 278.2 multiplied by this number of the moles. So 5.94 grams. So it means what mass we should get, the, the theoretical value, it says like we should get 5.94 gram theoretically. Because we, whenever we use the equation, we always get the theoretical value. So mass of the sodium chloride was given. Using the mass of the sodium chloride, we work out the moles of the sodium chloride. From moles of sodium chloride, we work out the moles of lead to chloride. And from moles of the lead to chloride, we work out what mass will be there. So theoretically, how much lead to chloride will be there? 5.94 grams theoretically. But the yield is 95%. So percentage yield is a practical value. We want to find the practical value. Divide by theoretical value into 100. The percentage yield is 95. Practical value, we don't know. Theorat theory suggests we should get 5.94 into 100. We just cross multiply. So 95 multiplied by 5.94 divided by 100. So what is the value of the X? It will be 5.65 grams. So 95% of 5.94 is about, it's 5.65 gram. So when we use the ratio in the equation, we get the theoretical value. Question 17 and 18, any doubt? Question 17 and 18. Page 10, question 17, 18. Page 11, question 19, 20. Page 11. Question 19. In question 19, 2 kilogram sample of a water contain 20 parts per million of a nitrate ion. What is the mass in gram of a nitrate ion? So the formula is concentration in parts per million equals mass of solute over mass of the solution or the solvent into 1 million. That's a formula. So concentration in parts per million, it's given 40 parts per million. So the concentration is 40. Mass of a solute, we don't know. Mass of the solvent was given 2 kilogram. Remember the unit, kg. It's 2 kg into 1 million. When we simplify this, so it will be 40 multiplied by 2 divided by 1 million. So 40 multiplied by 2, so it means it's 80 divided by 1 million. So 80 divided by 1 million. But that is in kg, but we need in grams. When we solve, we get 8 into 10 power minus 5, but that is in kg. Because the mass of the solute was in mass of the solution or sample of a water is in kg. So this unit is kg, but the question is, what is the mass in gram? So you have to convert the kilogram 
like it was 8 into 10 power minus 5 kilogram, you want to convert into gram. So to convert the kilogram into gram, what you have to do? You have to multiply by 1000. So when you multiply by 1000, this will turn out to be 8 into 10 power negative 2 grams. So this is actually in grams. 8 exponent minus 5 was in kilogram. Is it uh, clear? Next is question 20, 21, 20. Question 20. For the safety reasons, for the safety reasons, the concentration of the lead in pain should not exceed 600 parts per million by mass. Therefore, the mass of a lead in one kilogram of the paint. So the concentration in ppm, the parts per million, equals mass of solute over mass of the solvent. Or it can be moles as well. So mass of the solvent into 1 million. The concentration should not exceed more than 600 parts. So this is 600. Mass of a solute, like mass of the lead we are finding in the paint. So paint is a solvent. And how much paint is there? One kilogram. So the mass of the paint is one kilogram into one million. When we simplify, it will be like we need X. So it will be 600 divided by one million. So 600 divided by one million, it will be six into 10 power minus four kilogram. But the question is, the units, all the units are in gram. So we have to convert the kilogram into gram. So to convert the kilogram into gram, like 10 raised to the power minus 4 kg, we have to convert into gram. So we have to multiply by 1000. So it will be 6 into 10 to the power negative 1, which is equals to 0.6 kilogram. So B will be the right answer. Is it uh, clear? So the only difference is the unit is important. Like if the sol solvent unit is in kg, the solute will also be in kg, the same units. Question 21, 22, or 23? Any doubt? This was a weekly pop quiz. 22. In question 22, 10 cm cube of 1 exponent minus 2 mole per dm cube solution needed to be diluted to make a concentration of 5 exponent minus 4. What volume of a water in CMQ should be added? So first example, you have a container which is having 10 CMQ of the solution and it has a concentration of 1 exponent negative 2. 10 to the power negative 2, that's a concentration. So first we'll find how many moles are there. So to work out the moles, moles equal concentration into volume. The concentration is uh, one exponent minus two, negative two. And the volume is in is in cm cube. So we have to convert into decimeter cube. So it will be 0 0.01. So what's the answer for this? The number of the moles? It will be like one exponent minus four will be there, the number of the moles. How many moles are there in this solution? So one exponent minus four, yeah. So it means this solution has one exponent minus four. Now the question is, we want to dilute this solution. We want to add water. The moles does not change. The number of the moles remains same because we are not adding any, we are not adding a solute. We just need to add a water here. So when we add a water, the question is how much water should be added to this solution? So we have the same moles. The moles does not change. So we'll work out the total volume of the solution, the new volume of the solution. And then we just take a difference to know how much volume should be added. Like the moles in this solution, we want the same moles. 
because the moles are not changing. And we want this solution to have the concentration of five exponent negative four. So the solution should have a concentration of five exponent negative four. So what should be the volume of this solution? So moles equal concentration into volume. So volume is moles divided by concentration. So moles are one exponent negative four and the concentration of the solution is five exponent negative four. So when you simplify this, it is one divided by five. One divided by five is 0 0.2 decimeter cube. or 0.2 dm cube. You multiply by 1000, so it means it will be 200 cm cube. So it means this solution, yeah, 0.2 dm cube, or the new volume of the solution, the total volume of the solution should be 200 cm cube. So originally the solution was 10 cm cube, and now the solution should be 200 cm cube to have this many moles and the concentration. So the question is how much volume of a water should be added? So if original solution was 10 and the new solution is 200, how much volume of the water should be added? So we should add 190 cm cube. That's why C should be the right answer. Is it uh, clear? Discussion? So we work out the moles in the first solution. The moles in the first solution will be same as the moles in the second solution. Because we just add a deionized or a distilled water and we work out using the moles and the concentration, we work out the volume of the new solution and the difference in the volume it shows how much water should be added. Question 24, 25, any doubt? Question 24. Nitrogen monoxide react with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. 200 cm cube of a nitrogen monoxide mixed with 350 cm cube of the oxygen. What is the total volume in cm cube when the reaction is complete? First thing, as I mentioned, whenever you work out the total volume of the gaseous product, it is the unreacted reactant and it is a form product. How much reactant left unreacted and how much product is formed, that will give us the total volume. So between nitrogen monoxide and oxygen, the ratio is 2 is to 1. So if I have 200 cm cube of nitrogen, if I have 200 cm cube of a nitrogen monoxide, what volume of oxygen will react X? When we cross multiply, it means 100 cm cube of oxygen will react. But how much oxygen we have in the question? We have 350 cm cube of oxygen. Means we have additional 250 cm cube. So this will be completely used up, like the nitrogen monoxide completely used up. And the unreacted oxygen will be how much? Because out of 350, 100 is reacting. So how much oxygen is left unreacted? That is 250 cm cube. Then we find the amount of a product. And again, we'll take a ratio between nitrogen monoxide. Why? Because it is a limiting reagent. Limiting reagent decides the amount of a product form. The ratio between the nitrogen monoxide and the nitrogen dioxide is 2 is to 2 or 1 is to 1. So if you have 200, and 200 cm cube of a nitrogen monoxide, how much nitrogen dioxide will be there? X cross multiply, we get the same answer. So how much product will form? The product form will be 200 cm cube. The question is, what is the total volume of the gaseous mixture? So the gaseous mixture will be the unreacted oxygen and the form nitrogen dioxide. That's why it is 250 and 200. So the total volume will be 450 cm cube. Is it uh, clear? Question 25, 26, 27. Any doubt? 25C, 25C and 26, okay. 
What is the minimum volume of a hydrochloric acid with a concentration 4 mole per dm cube that react with 0.2 moles of nickel carbonate? So, the ratio between the nickel carbonate and the hydrochloric acid is ratio 1 is to 2. So, nickel carbonate and the hydrochloric acid, the ratio is 1 is to 2. So, in the question, how many moles we have for the nickel carbonate? That is 0.2. So, if you have 0 0.2 moles of the nickel carbonate, how many moles of a hydrochloric acid will be there? X. Cross multiply. So, you got 0 0.4 moles of HCl. We have the moles of HCl and we have the concentration of HCl. That's the concentration. So we can work out the mo volume. Moles equal concentration into volume. So moles are 0 0.4. The concentration is 4 and the volume is... We don't know. So 0 0.4 divided by 4. So when we simplify this, it will be 0 0.1. 0 0.1, but what, what is the unit? Like this is 0 0.1 decimeter cube. But all the answers are given in cm cube. So if 0 0.1, we want to convert into the centimeter cube. So we'll multiply by 1000. So when we multiply this by 1000, so it will be 100 cm cube. So what is the minimum volume of a hydrochloric acid we need? So we need 100 cm cube of a hydrochloric acid. So from moles of nickel carbonate, we work out moles of HCl. And using a ratio, we work out the moles and then using a formula we work out the volume of HCl which is needed. Question 26. Hydrogen is manufactured using the reaction. The percentage yield of this process is 90%. The mass of a hydrogen in ton which can be produced from 160 tons of a methane. Look if the mass is given then you should take a mass ratio. If the moles are given you will take the mole ratio. So, according to equation, if methane is producing the hydrogen, what is the total mass of a methane? Because carbon is 12 and hydrogen is 1 into 4, so total mass is 16. And what is the total mass of a hydrogen produced here? It will be hydrogen is 1 and 6 are there total. So, ratio is 1, 16 is to 6. Like if you have 16 units or 16 grams of Methane, it will give 6 grams of hydrogen. So if we have 160 tons of methane, how much hydrogen will be there? It will be X. Jesus cross multiply. So how much hydrogen will get? get? We'll get 60 tons of hydrogen. But in the question they mentioned, we only get 90% of what we are. So 60, if the, it was 100%, it will give us 60, 60 tons. But it is not 100%, it's 90%. So just take 90% of the 60. So 90% of the 60 will be 54. So B will be the right answer for this. Is it uh, clear, this one? Any other question? One of the students uh, mentioned two part B, I think. Two is having one part only. B, there is no 2B. Actually, 2 is only 1. 